the data is really the key. So if you want to solve this puzzle of your life and this measurement data, you actually need a lot, need a lot of this good stuff. So there are a lot of these buzzwords now ongoing big data, data analytics, neural networks. But how many of us can really do it? And if we are looking at our personal data, so there is no intelligence in those applications. This is really, really hard to do. And us, the data scientists, we know that it's actually 80% of the work is data integration, cleaning the data and so on. So trust me, you need help in this, uh, in your, in your own life, if you want to measure it in, in this way. So I'm, uh, I have a strong background in the corporate world, uh, coming from uh, Nokia, being an R&D manager there, and then in Accenture as a business consultant. So I know that this actually is really, really matters to businesses or to our productivity. So if we want to have healthy and fit and happy workers, they actually they produce more, which is really a good thing in our in our modern society. But what you need is digital well-being service because if you have these devices and data you are really really overwhelmed with all of this what we can already do so without professional help and some people have uh, uh, after my presentations they, they really have said to me that you need professional help I do need professional help in interpreting all of this data I'm, I, I have a PhD in technology and, and measurement science, but I don't understand medicine or nutrition or exercise or anything like that. So I actually need help in that. And now if we want to have a productivity from, from our workers or from our employees, it's actually really very much a job of a company or employer to offer these kind of well-being services in order to uh, avoid early retirement or actually people leaving the company or, or sick leaves and all that. So in Finland alone, the annual figure is, figure is staggering for uh, uh, this unhealthiness that we have in, in our society. It's 41 billion euros annually. Most of it comes from the early retirement. So each person who uh, goes to early retirement costs on average 1, 1 million euros. And we have roughly 20,000 of those annually. So it's kind of happiness. Is there anyone who doesn't know what Skynet is? Raise your hand. Skynet is uh, in the movie Terminator. It's the artificial intelligence which takes over the world. So I think in many of sense we are obsessed by this happiness and well-being. So in order to, to do that, uh, actually what we are perceiving now with, uh, with Temu is this kind of like Skynet of happiness. Are we allowed to actually say that what is our working title for you? I didn't use that in, in, in purpose. The application. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we met with Temu in, in March, and Temu came up this, with this idea about Heroes app. That uh, if we think of our lives as a journey, so there is this hero, uh, and uh, I'm using Luke Skywalker as example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a traditional uh, storyline that's basically every great story from Lord of the Rings to Star Wars to to ancient Greek uh, stories and so on. So there is always um, some kind of development of the hero that's usually it's some you know regular guy just like you and me uh, being drawn into an adventure where they meet uh, mentors and different challenges and, and uh, eventually they have to face a really really uh, sort of critical tipping point in their sort of uh, journey as a hero. They may need to, for example, challenge their father or a great villain or themselves to be reborn as a hero. This is Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. Uh, that's like the monomyth. It's called monomyth. Uh, the sort of like underlying storyline. And all of us have, and I'm, I'm intrigued with the idea of uh, every one of us. What is your hero's journey? What is what is the character you are developing and uh, what kind of things can you bring into your life to help that happen more easier? I mean, we do things like exercise, we have careers in terms of work. Uh, what else, what systems do you choose to belong to, to be part of? What social systems, what human systems, what non-human system, what kind of technologies you use, what kind of 
search engines you use and all these things, it's like a man with a bicycle becomes part of the bicycle. It's not man separate from a bicycle. You're one system. You're acting as one. Uh, in a similar way, you can change yourself by choosing what systems you belong to. And that's a great um, leverage for anyone in, on their hero's journey or whatever uh, personal development uh, kind of thing you are into. Yeah, thanks, Tim. So this is actually what we are really we are doing this. So I just uh, because I'm we went actually discuss this that uh, we all love to use this heroes app because it's, it's our working title. So I just use the Skynet of Happiness. And uh, now the other term for that would be world's smartest Uber app. And actually World Economic Forum has been really, really helpful and helping us. So there is World Economic Forum has this personal data working group. So you should seek that or Google that. And it has a plenty of good info information that where this personal data is going to and what should be taken in, into account. So there are certain portions, uh, portions or places in, uh, in the world that people are living the longest and are the most happiest. And those places are called the blue zones. And also at Okinawa, at Sardinia, island in the Mediterranean, Ikara, uh, Ikaros is one of the islands of the Mediterranean. Then there is a Nicoya village at Costa Rica in Central America. And uh, then there is one a little town in California where people are living the longest and happiest. And what is really the common for those communities is actually that they have really healthy Mediterranean food or nutrition. They exercise regularly, but not like running marathons or triathlons. They are just walking in the nature and, and uh, taking care of their farms. They have really good balance in their life. Uh, they have the, the community. Uh, the city and the, the commune that they are living in uh, really embraces them. Everybody knows, knows each other, which means that they can live a healthy and happy life without measuring anything or using any apps at all. So this is actually something that we can really learn already by studying these healthiest, healthiest and happiest populations in the world. But still, I think there is a room for these measurements and, and these uh, uh, devices, because enough is enough of these devices. We need more simple and useful applications. Okay, thank you. Thank you.